Welcome back to WDUR 1490 AM. This is uh, Steve Rao. You're listening to Leaders and Legends, and we have with us Bob Giolis. Bob, thank you again for being with us. Um, you had just talked about startups, you know, innovation. Do you have any examples of um, any startup successes of RTP? You know, we, what we have right now, I think, um, without getting into specific names, because I'll get in trouble with all the, all the folks I know, I, I think that um, what I'm most proud of right now that we're doing with the entrepreneurial community is uh, this facility we call the Frontier. And what I like about that is that it, it brings together uh, entrepreneurs, it brings together uh, creative uh, people who can be artists, they can be musicians, um, and they come together and they think about different kinds of ways uh, to collaborate to help their businesses. So um, there's a company there called Storyboard, which is doing, they're a startup company, they're doing work uh, in videography and storytelling, and they're linking up with many of the creative types uh, and the other entrepreneurs and the other companies that are hanging out over at the frontier. Um, and that's exciting. I know earlier, uh, we both get caught up saying this, Steve. We both say young entrepreneurs as if they're the only ones. <laughs> Let me tell you what I love about the frontier is how many people have gray That's hair true. like I do who are getting into creating their second, third, or fourth And business. even in, within the frontier, it's a great place to network. Yeah. Um, the Thai group has had events there. Uh, they got the bunker, which is to train veteran entrepreneurs. It's just amazing. There's just so much going on there. Yeah. And um, another group I'm really proud of is a group called the North Carolina Newsroom Cooperative. You know, when we started putting together the frontier and we were talking about the users, we discovered that there were people, um, out in the community who are freelancing now who have left traditional journalism and they might be writers. They might be videographers. They might be doing documentary. Uh, they might do press uh, type materials for people, but they have to generally work at home because they're not invited in to traditional co-working space. At the frontier, they're creating a cooperative. They'll have their own newsroom studio and there they'll be able uh, to collaborate on writing stories, covering events, um, and, and also providing uh, not just news and information, but also uh, the storytelling skills that private individuals or companies might need uh, as a part of their media plan. Well, that's great. And um, well, we're really excited for all of these great things that you're doing. And so the final segment, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the what, what's been known as the Park Center. And, and so I'll begin my question with, you know, the last um, time I was at the RTP headquarters, there was this big announcement. And um, you brought everyone there together. And then um, the announcement was the Durham County Commission giving additional money for this Park Center expansion. So could you start talk a little bit about what Park Center is yeah, and what sure. your vision is for this? Sure. Well, we, we've talked about the great history of the park, and we've talked about where we are today, which is really successful. But we also talked about transitions in the marketplace, the changes uh, from, from a big multinational companies to more of an entrepreneurial set. And when you, when you look at serving or creating a community that's going to serve uh, so many different types of people, um, you have to have cer certain amenities in an environment to do that. RTP was never designed to have retail or residential in the park. Going back in the 1950s or 60s, our model of a very suburban park was the uh, the forward thinking, the new way of thinking. Today, we need those amenities. So Park Center uh, will be the first place in the park within the physical park boundaries uh, where people can live, They'll be able to uh, shop there. There'll be great food and um, uh, services there. Uh, there'll be a new hotel there. There'll be a major, a major public park uh, that people can come and experience. It'll be a place for families and friends. We like to say it's a place for dreamers, believers, and creators. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new concept. And what Durham County did was uh, seeing that value, they've uh, agreed to invest $20 million dollars uh, we within the foundation will also invest another 20 and the owners and tenants of the park put up 10. So we have $50 million that goes into the horizontal development and uh, that will be under construction the next 12 months and then up we go with vertical. So we're going to begin construction of this a mixed use, a homegrown restaurants, a desk you've talked about the tobacco campus brand, maybe yeah. bringing these yeah. kinds of things to the park. 
So yeah, we want to. You know, one of the things that's important to us is that we not duplicate what's already in the market. We already have. Uh, nice shopping malls here. This is not a mall. We already have, um, you know, centers like Briar Creek or North Hills. Uh, we have some nice mixed use centers. This has to be different because you're dealing with the global brand of RTP. So we began with saying there are four things we have to make sure this new environment does. It's got to be highly collaborative. So it's not just a place you go and shop, but it's a place where you go, you get ideas, you engage, you meet people, you learn something new, you have fun. It's highly collaborative. Number two, it's authentic and genuine. It, it's going to embrace um, the park. Uh, it's going to embrace who we are as North Carolinians. It's going to speak to the future. Um, it's going to be a place that people will recognize around the world as RTP. Uh, third, it'll be inspiring. It'll tell stories. It'll be a place where you can uh, see technology, where it'll be showcased, where you'll have an opportunity to um, uh, learn about our, our great history of RTP, but also get a chance to see and touch the science and technology, the arts and the humanities of the world moving forward. It'll be a place that will really inspire people. And finally, accessible and affordable. We've got to make space where uh, these young entrepreneurs and older entrepreneurs and all the folks in the middle can get space and really work on their ideas. It's about idea creation, not simply about real estate. Okay, well, I mean, this is great, and I and I uh, I really commend you on uh, leading this vision. And there's just a lot more excitement and buzz around uh, Park Center and the whole RTP. Uh, a couple of final questions before we get to the the last one um, and some comments. I I was curious as to we have had on the show Wake County Commissioner Sig Hutchison, and we've had a very engaging discussion on transit. Um, we've also had members of the school board here talking about education and there's been some concerns that we're not investing as much in public education or teacher pay when governor hunt your former boss was governor left the governorship mm -hmm. after a second term we were 22nd in teacher pay mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about how investments in transit and education would help you sell the product or the rtp to companies around the world you know if you go back uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the history if you go back to when luther hodges and the business leaders and education leaders came together they formed a pact of sorts and that pact was that governor hodges said uh, the state will invest in infrastructure and in education the park will invest in itself and it will be a self-sustaining operational entity. And um, the universities would generate a great talent. Um, the Where we are today is we continue to struggle uh, to see the full level of investments that we need to have in education and in infrastructure. Now, there may be a variety of different ways to solve that, and I'll leave that to our politicians to figure that out. But I will say that um, if the reputation of North Carolina, of our universities, of our K-12 through system, is questioned because we don't appear to be making the investments we should be, then um, the entire RTP brand is hurt. Oh. Here's the bottom line in North Carolina. We are not a state with an abundance of natural resources. We don't have oil. We don't have coal. We don't have great timber resources. Our greater resources are people, and we have to invest in them. We have to invest in their education, and we have to invest in infrastructure. So um, that's great. I mean, we have to invest in our people. And, and the other question is transit. Yeah. Do you think that we need to have... Um rail and bus and, and, and the referendum is going to be on Wake County in, in this year. Is that important? Yes, to it's very important. Uh, we were supportive of the Durham effort uh, when uh, they moved that forward. Same thing for Orange County. And we're very supportive of what is happening in Wake County. And I know the leaders in the park are. Uh, we have, as I mentioned earlier, somewhere around you know 40,000 people coming in and out of the park every day. Anybody who's driven on I-40 or 540 experiences that all the time. Um, so we have to find a way to move people around our region and in and out of the park more efficiently and effectively. Uh, if you go to the park today, uh, you won't see a circulator system because the truth is Bear employees don't go to IBM and IBM doesn't go to Fidelity and Fidelity doesn't go to Cisco. But with Park Center, we'll have a central place. Oh, shit. 
that will have a central location and that central location will allow us to run a circulator through the park. That circulator system will be at a regional transit center. That regional transit center will connect to whatever service is being provided through Durham County and will connect to whatever services are being provided in Wake County. So this kind of connectivity is going to help us compete at a global level. We have to have it. We have to have it. But okay. it's, it's, not, it's not just the regional transit. I am highly in favor, and so is our park board, around the idea of regional transit. In addition to that, though, when we bring housing into the park, that helps take some pressure off because now people can live closer to where they yeah. work. Right? Walkability. We've you know. also got a, lots of walking and biking trails in the park. We're going to enhance that. We are going to build uh, and start working this year on a... Um, on a bike share program that will link up companies in the park. We're talking to the elf people out of Durham about providing elf vehicles to help us move through the park. That's fine. That's fantastic. So, um, one final thought. Well, I just want to share this with you that I do think, you know, John Harden from the commerce office, um, you know, shared with us at a Triangle J meeting. It's a board I serve on from Morrisville that we're uh, 23rd on the innovation index, which is actually lower than what most people see. But I think it's very important for people to see the importance of investments that we're making in our people, in our talent. And um, even technology, I think, is important. Broadband, internet access, these kinds of things that will enable the whole state of North Carolina to compete. Mm -hmm. So I often say that I know that the NC, we just had the NC Connect guys on, but that's an important investment, you know, higher education, STEM, uh, eventually transportation, you know. And so I just wanted to, you know, give that as as someone that's a policymaker or, you know, city councilman. Let's talk real quickly before we close out today on diversity. So 23, 25% of our population in Morsel is from the nation of India. We're on a South Asian Indian radio station. Uh, very, very exciting. Uh, you and I have had engaging discussions about this. Do you believe that we are better positioned today to leverage our diversity for economic growth? Um, our diversity is one of our uh, great strengths. And, and it's been fueled because of our, uh, our universities, because of our education system. It has brought a tremendous amount of talent and resources here from all over the world. And, and that's been a great blessing for us. Uh, the jobs uh, that have come as a result of the companies that have located here in the park and surrounding the park have also brought in great talent and individuals uh, from all over the world. It makes our... Uh, it makes our community stronger. It makes our state richer. Um, and, and it sends a message, I think, to people who are looking for places to go. Uh, and they're looking for places where they're going to find that kind of cultural diversity. They're going to find places that are very accepting and welcoming, that this is a great place for that. You know, uh, when it, on the issue of, uh, you know, one of the groups uh, we often talk a lot about are women in technology in particular. Uh, and there's been a lot of questions around if other places like Silicon Valley are as friendly to women. Um, all you got to do is look at our region. We have women chancellors, women vice chancellors, women business leaders, women entrepreneurs. And because we're a place that's really family friendly, it's a place where women uh, in particular can find uh, both the ability to be moms, working moms, scientists, technologists, engineers, just like dads are working dads and do all those things. So that diversity is enormously vital to our success. Well, that's great. And, and you and I, we're going to eventually pull it off over next year, but uh, we, Bob and I have an idea of eventually taking him to India and doing a, a trip there to recruit companies and to talk about the park where we can, uh, you know, have and I've a I've never dialogue. been to India, and it's one of the places on my list, so I need to go with somebody who knows how to get around because I hear it's kind of big and there's a lot of people. A lot of people. So, we're working so on it, hopefully help. this year. We'll be right back for closing comments, and we're with Bob Giolis. Uh, we'll be right back after a station break. 